Good morning, everyone. <laughs> Good morning. <laughs> Happy Easter. <laughs> Welcome to worship at Well of Hope ELCA in Castle Rock, Colorado. I'm so happy to see all of your faces today. Um, just a special welcome to um, new worshipers that are with us, whether you're in person or online. Um, we're just so happy to have you um, worship with us today. If you are worshiping online um, on Facebook Live, please say hello in the chat. Patrick is going to be the online greeter today, um, and he'll be there to answer any questions that you might have um, and engage with you throughout worship. We have a digital bulletin that you can scan. I don't know if we had enough bulletins or if anyone is, everyone is able to grab some, but if you want to follow along and don't have a bulletin, you can scan this QR code on your device, um, on your phone, and that'll pull up the bulletin and you can follow along on your phone. Um, just a, a couple more announcements. Uh, Senate Assembly this year, if you wanna pull that up, Patrick. Great. Uh, Senate Assembly this year is happening in El Paso, Texas from May 16th to 18th, and there is still time to register. Um, so, and Well of Hope is able to cover some of the travel expenses um, for Well of Hope representatives. So um, if you are interested in attending Senate Assembly this year, um, please talk to me. Um, if you have any prayers that you would like to have read during the prayers of the people, um, feel free to fill out those prayer request cards. You might have some in your bulletin, and there's also some in the back on the music stand there. Um, and you can just fill that out and we'll read those prayers during the prayers of the people. Um, and at any point throughout the service before the prayers of the people, you can go ahead and put them in this basket up here on the altar. Um, and if you're online, you can drop those prayers in the chat and we'll be sure to get those read too. Um, and Michael is going to make an announcement about our special musician that we have with us today. Yes, we are so thrilled to have a guest artist joining us today, Jenna Hunt. Um, if you've been around Well of Hope for a minute or two, you might remember before COVID that she joined us for a Christmas service in 2019. So please help me make Jenna feel welcome. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Do we have any other announcements? All right, well then let us quiet our hearts and minds and we'll begin with our call to worship. invite you to stand as we begin our worship together. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Christ is risen indeed. Is risen indeed. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God by whose hand we are given new birth, by whose speaking we are given new life. Amen. Amen. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are welcomed, restored, and supported as citizens of the new creation. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. Holy God, holy and merciful, holy and mighty, you are the river of life. You are the everlasting wellspring. In mercy and might, you have freed us from death 
and raised us with Jesus, the firstborn of the dead. In baptismal waters, our old life is washed away, and in them we are born anew. Glory to you for oceans and lakes, for rivers and streams. Honor to you for waters that wash us clean, quench our thirst, and nurture both crops and creatures. Praise to you for the life-giving water of baptism, the outpouring of the spirit of the new creation. Wash away our sin and all that separates us from you. Empower our witness to your resurrection. Strengthen our resolve in seeking justice for all. Satisfy the world's need through this living water, where drought dries the earth, bring refreshment. Where despair prevails, grant hope. Where chaos reigns, bring peace. We ask this through Christ, who with you and the Holy Spirit reigns forever. Amen. Amen. We invite you to join in singing our gathering hymn, Jesus Christ is Risen Today. We'll be singing verses 1, 2, and 4. to be seated and we invite any of the kids who are with us to come on up front for some you get home from school and you're so excited to be home, you just drop your backpack and your coat and your lunchbox and you just leave it on the floor. Have you ever done that? Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yes. And then I want you to imagine that then the next morning it's time for school again and you go to the door and your stuff isn't there. Where do you think it might have gone? To your home. Who do you think might have taken care of your stuff? Yeah, maybe your mom or your dad picked up your stuff and they put it where it belonged, right? Because it doesn't belong there. I talk about putting stuff where it belongs because that's what happens in our Bible story today. That we've been hearing about all through Lent, how Jesus was getting ready to die. That 
Some people didn't like Jesus very much. And then they killed Jesus on the cross. And Jesus' friends were so sad. And then they took Jesus' body off the cross because Jesus was dead. And they put him in the tomb and they covered it up with a big rock. And then everyone was sad and they waited. But the next day, a couple of women who were Jesus' friends, they went back to the tomb because they knew where Jesus' body had been left. They knew it was in the tomb. So they went back to take care of Jesus' body for his burial. And when they went there, it was gone. Jesus' body was gone. Do you know what happened? God put Jesus's, Jesus where he belonged. An angel even told the women, why are you looking for the living among the dead? Because Jesus didn't belong with the dead. Jesus belonged with the living. And Jesus was alive. And Jesus is alive. And that's why we come to church this, this Sunday on Easter and every Sunday. Because of that Easter good news that Jesus is alive and Jesus is belongs with the living. Do you know who that is? That's you. And that's me. And that's you. And you. And you. And you. And you. Jesus belongs here. And Jesus is here among the living and with us on Easter and every single day. Let's say a prayer. Dear God, Dear God, Dear God thank you. Thank you for your gift of Jesus. For your gift of Jesus. Who is alive. Who is alive. And who is with us. And who is with us. Amen. Amen. The first reading today is from Acts 10, verses 34 through 43. Peter began to speak to the people. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. How he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. Word of God, word of life. And Thanks be to God. God. We invite you to rise as you're able to join in singing our gospel acclamation. <laughs> Thank you. 
Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 21st chapter. Glory Glory to you, O Lord. After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descending from heaven came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothing white as snow. For here, fear of him, the guards shook and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, Do not be afraid. I know that you are looking for Jesus who is crucified. He is not here, for he has been raised, as he said. Come, see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples he has been raised from the dead, and indeed he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. This is my message for you. So they left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them and said, Greetings. And they came to him, took hold of his feet and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Dear people of Well of Hope, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Please be seated. And of course, a happy and a blessed Easter to all of you. It's so good to have you with us this morning to worship. Isn't, isn't Easter just the most amazing day? I mean, I, this is the highlight of my year every year. I think it's just an extraordinary time. And, and it's one of those times when the, when the celebration supersedes everything around us. You know, and it kind of doesn't even matter if we're in the great cathedrals of Europe with those towering stained glass windows or whether we're gathered here in a multi-purpose room. It's the, it's the message of the resurrection. For seven years... As a pastor developer in Phoenix, I celebrated Easter in a grade school cafeteria, and every one of those celebrations was just wonderful. Well, now this is number eight for me, so I'm so (laughs) glad, so glad to be with you here today, Easter Sunday. What a great time for us to celebrate. I, I remember so many wonderful Easter celebrations over the year, but one that always comes back to my mind is the very first Easter I celebrate as a pastor. I was a pastoral intern at a small church just outside of Seattle. My supervisor was preaching, of course, because it was the big day, and I was leading the liturgy, and and he got done with his sermon, and I went back behind the altar, and I led the creed, and I led the prayers, and I initiated the sharing of the peace. They quickly shook hands and sat down, and they did peace different back then than we do it now. It seems to take a little longer these days. But I sort of lost track of where we were. And I looked out and saw all the people sitting down, and so I asked them to stand up, and I walked behind the altar and invited them to prepare themselves for the meal, and my internship supervisor jumped up and said, no, 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 we can't fail to take an offering with all these people here. (laughs) (laughs) It was a pretty embarrassing moment for a very nervous young intern. I think a lot of those folks still remember that. I know my supervisor still remembers that. But Easter Sunday is a time of remembering, isn't it? I mean, it's a remembering of those treasured experiences that we've had with people we love. And it's a remembering of this great story that's told at this time every year. Each of the gospel writers tell it a little bit differently. But St. Matthew tells us that it's Mary and Mary who get up very early before dawn, who make themselves ready, who, who head out towards that tomb. And you just have to wonder what's going through their mind that morning. You know, what, what, what sense, an overwhelming sense of pain comes to them from the whole week that had led up to that day. What sense of dread may have been a part of their journey as they wondered what would it be like to, to go and stand in front of that place where their friend and teacher had been laid to rest. And then when they get to the tomb, look at what happens. They're just met with this flurry of activity. The, the ground starts shaking beneath their feet, just as it did on Friday afternoon when Jesus died. And this angel, in, in a kind of a terrifying appearance, descends from heaven, rolls away the stone, sits on the stone, and begins to speak to them and tells them three things. He says, fear not. He is risen. Go and tell his disciples. 
And Mary and Mary get out of there in a hurry. They're dashing down the path. And, and who do they run into? But Jesus himself, who also does three things. He's, he greets them. He tells them not to be afraid. And he, too, tells them to go and tell the disciples. What a gift this must be to those two women. Those two women who had suffered so much with Jesus along the week before. What a gift to hear the announcement from the angel. And even more so, to see Jesus himself alive and greeting them. It's a gift to them, but it's a gift that comes with a responsibility. As both the angel and Jesus command these two to go and to tell. To go and to tell. I'm always intrigued with the way Matthew describes them in that moment. Did you catch that? Matthew said that upon hearing the words of the angel, Mary and Mary were filled with fear and great joy. Fear and great joy. What a combination. It had been a fearful week for them, a horrible week. It started out terrific. Palm Sunday, their hearts were filled with joy as Jesus was welcomed into Jerusalem with this great parade and, and celebration. But, but fear began to capture their hearts as they saw the crowd was turned against him, as they saw him arrested and mistreated by the officials, as they saw him led up the hill to Galilee and hung on a cross to die. The, their hearts must have just been filled with fear. And, and, and I suspect that Easter morning on its own was a bit fearsome, wasn't it? To see this angel, to feel the earth shake, to watch the stone roll away, to be told that Jesus isn't there any longer. There's a great fear that became a part of this journey for them. But what Mary and Mary learn is that great joy overcomes fear. And so even though the angel and Jesus called them to something that they could hardly even imagine doing, it was their great joy in the resurrection. Their great joy in being united with Jesus again that led them forth to tell the disciples. And one suspects they spent the whole rest of their lives <laughs> telling this great story of what had happened to them on that first Easter morning. Well, we too, like Mary and Mary, are witnesses to this great story. We too have heard the story of resurrection and it's found a place in our hearts and in our lives and in our homes. And that's why we're here this morning. We're here because we've experienced the meaning of and purpose that comes to us through our faith. We've experienced what it's like to be connected with God through Christ, a, a connection that gives us great joy. We, we've experienced what it's like to serve together in his name and to continue to be the presence of Christ in this world. This is a great, great gift to us. But we learn this morning that it's a gift not only to treasure, but it's also a gift to share. And as we look around ourselves in this world, we realize that, that we've got friends and acquaintances who don't have a relationship with God through Jesus Christ. We know that we have neighbors who don't have a church family to call home. And we know that there are people right at this very moment in the Castle Rock community who don't know that there is a warm and welcoming and loving and service-oriented congregation like Well of Hope right in their backyard. So how are they going to find these things out? Well, they're going to find them out as we tell them. As we tell them about the faith that's, that's come to guide and shape and comfort our lives. As we tell them about the fellowship that brings us such joy when we gather with people who share that faith. As we tell them about how meaningful it is for us to serve Christ's name as we reach out together to the poor and disfranchised of those around us in this world. It's as we live into this call to be witnesses to the gospel, witnesses who have received a great gift, not a gift, a gift only to treasure, but a gift also to share. It's as we live into that calling that we too experience the kind of great joy that Mary and Mary experience, the great joy that overcomes any fear or misgivings or concern we might have of what God calls us to do. The joy that comes from sharing with others the good news that Christ is risen. Christ is risen. Oh, you got to share it better than that, friends. Christ is risen. Christ is risen. Christ is risen. Christ is risen. We share that with great hope and with great joy, thankful for all that God has done for us, and hopeful that the good news might move through us to touch the hearts and lives of others. Amen.
We invite you to rise in body or spirit to join in singing our song of the day, Thine is the Glory. people of God in Christ Jesus, let us pray for the church, those in need, and all of God's creation. Holy God, you call your church to witness to your salvation. We give thanks for all theologians, preachers, and teachers who proclaim your gospel, equip all the baptized to share the joy of the resurrection in all we say and do. Risen Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. <clears throat> Creator God, you bring abundant life throughout creation. The green blade rises, and all creation greets the resurrection dawn. Preserve vineyards and orchards and those who tend them. Feed us with the fruits of creation. Risen Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Mighty God, you show your steadfast love without regard to borders, barriers, or human-made divisions. Infuse your justice in every nation of the world. We pray that all experience, that all experience the peace <clears throat> that only you can give. Risen Lord, in your mercy. Yes. Compassionate God, <clears throat> you anointed your Son with the Holy Spirit and with power. Encourage us by his example in our ministries of healing, care, and outreach. We pray for all those or for who are who are sick or hospitalized, and for all health care workers who care for them. <clears throat> we also pray for all those we name aloud and in our hearts. Risen Lord, in your mercy. Your Faithful God, you have put gladness in our hearts, inspiring musicians and dancers to rejoice with songs of victory. Bless the music ministries of this congregation and all who foster our assembly song. Risen Lord, in your mercy. Eternal God, 
As you have raised Jesus from the dead, you show us your resurrection promise. With your holy ones who have sung your praise, free us from fear and empower us to go and tell the good news. Risen Lord, in your mercy. Rejoicing in the victory of Christ's resurrection, we lift our prayers and praise to you, almighty and eternal God, through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Thank you. We take a time to greet one another in the name of Christ. That's great. Good job, man. Appreciate your help. Everybody gets a little that's right, that's right. You see, if they had taken this much time to share the peace in 1983, I would have remembered the offering. <laughs> At this time, we will invite you to offer yourselves in support of the ministry that God has entrusted to this congregation. We encourage your generosity as these plates are passed this morning. And for those friends of ours who are joining us online, we invite you to stop by the Well of Hope website where you too can find some ways to offer your support to this ministry. We offer ourselves as a sign of our desire to give our whole lives to God in Christ.
invite those of you who are able to stand with us. Let us pray together. Generous God, in this meal you offer your very self. We give thanks for these gifts of the earth. In the breaking of this bread, reveal to us the risen one. In the pouring of this wine, pour us out in service to the world. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is, is right, right to give God thanks, thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb, who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death, and in rising has brought us to eternal life. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink of this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Therefore, O God, with this bread and cup, we remember the life our Lord suffered for us. And believing in the witness of his resurrection, we await his coming in power to share with us the great and promised feast. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Send now, we pray, your Holy Spirit, that we who share in Christ's body and blood may live to the praise of your glory and receive our inheritance with all your saints in light. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit. Join our prayers with those of your servants of every time and every place and unite them with the ceaseless petitions of our great high priest until he comes as victorious Lord of all. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and to teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God. Come as you are and receive the presence of Christ in this meal, for the gifts of God are free. free. Please be seated and come forward as you are ready to receive. We invite our online guests to share some bread and wine with each other in your setting, and we know that as we eat together, even in different places, we are united by the presence of Christ, which feeds us in this meal.
Please stand with us if you are able. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious God, in you we live and move and have our being. With your word and this meal of grace, you have nourished our life together. Strengthen us to show your love and serve the world in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And now may the God of all who raised Jesus from the dead bless you by the power of the Holy Spirit to live in the new creation. Amen. Amen. We invite you to join in singing our sending song, Amazing Grace, My Chains Are Gone.
Go in peace. Serve the risen one. Praise be to God. Love God. Serve God. Love all. Serve all. Happy Thank Easter. Go ahead. I just said happy Easter. Happy Easter. Thank you so much for joining us in worship this morning. It's great to have you all here.